pulling some manure this morning, got some cold weather. The spreader was filled with junky haylage out of that silo we were cleaning out, pulling that out first. The stuff was definitely heating up sitting in the spreader for the last few days. I stopped in at the shop. This tractor's a little low on hydraulic oil. It's starting to whine a little bit. It's just me being irresponsible is all it is. Down to 20 degrees. And I'm getting a good start because I didn't have to milk this morning. Should be able to get all the manure out we want to today. He's got his breaker going in the basement there, getting rid of those last rocks. Should be ready to pour concrete after today. Calling for rain the next two days then, so it might be next week until we're pouring concrete. We're gonna clean out the rest of this stacking area. Yo, keep going. <laughs> Guess he was distracted trying to look at what the excavator was doing. I brought the skid steer to our heifer farm now. I want to take a few loads of manure out of this pen. Been wanting to do this, it just hasn't been that cold, so we couldn't get in the fields lately. Come on, girls, come on. My dad will be down here with feed pretty soon. Just pen them over the bunk area they can eat then. He's getting there, it's a pretty slow process, breaking those rocks up. We got two spreaders out of here. There's a little bit left, but I'm not going to come back for a third of a load. My dad's not going to be happy if he gets down here and I'm right in the way for him to try and run feet in. Yeah, he'll be okay. I kind of like the 7220 on the spreader a little bit more than the 7130. This tractor's turned up a little bit, so it's got about 135 PTO horsepower. Running this fodder bed pack through those vertical beaters actually takes some power. I'm running at a good pace right now and it's not bogging down at all, and the other tractor would be. Those vertical beaters just do an awesome job. We want to no-till corn straight into this field in the spring, and it's all really finely spread out. Got four spreaders out of that barn down there. Getting ready to throw a couple round bales in here. I got almost everything out. Doesn't need to be perfect.
next thing to work at today, this is rubber belting we're going to be installing in our dry cow barn. This is the barn we keep our dry cows in. It was built in 1999 and it was originally for milking cows. That barn over there was a tie stall. They were milking 78 cows in there and then they'd switch out 50. This is a 51 stall barn. It was a lot of work. They had about 130 cows at that point. It took a lot of time to milk. And once they built the big freestyle barn in 2004, all the cows went up there. Then this became the dry cow barn. It's got plenty of space for our dry cows. We usually only have about 30 in this pen. It's a three row barn, so there's extra stalls. Not necessarily a ton of extra eating space though. They'd put a five foot strip of rubber in the front where the cows stand to eat. And I think that was a good idea. It's comfortable, but this stuff is really slippery and it seems to be getting worse now. It's also starting to break apart at certain spots, starting to get torn up. See this rubber, it's got the grooves in it, but the surface is actually very smooth. And we have trouble with cows slipping on this. We actually had a cow injure herself recently. We really should have replaced it sooner. We knew it was a little bit slick. I hate to see a cow getting injured from rubber that's supposed to be helping the comfort, not hurting it. I'm gonna chase all the cows to the back, let to scrape this manure out of here and then start tearing this old stuff out. This rubber's starting to tear and it's hard to not catch it when you're scraping out. There's a strip missing right here. It's starting to bulge up. Here you can get a little better shot of the rubber. Completely smooth on the surface. We keep our dry cows in the barn as well as heifers before they calve. Stay in here for a couple months. It's gonna be easy to tear it out. All the tap cons are staying in the floor there. We're gonna have to cut those off, break them off. Oh, wow. I know, I was trying. It's actually, it's stronger than I thought. I was trying to stand on it. We gotta put it in the dumpster, I guess. Or else we could cut it into chunks and we could sell it to fans of the channel. Like $5 a square foot, does that sound good? It's a souvenir, guys. I can see it being a decorative piece or something. You gotta always have that business mindset, you know what I mean? Tore down the house last week. We had a little bit of space in that last dumpster. I wish we had this done before to throw it in there. Probably cut it into a couple sections and then put it in the dumpster as we can. This new rubber is really heavy. You can't even pick it all up with the skid loader at once. Fasten down with these little tap cons.
got all the Tapcons broken off. Scraped them all into this pile, mixed in with the manure there. So we're gonna get this out of here. So this is a hard rubber belting. It's got metal in it, so it's it's heavy stuff, really strong. And it's kind of scuffed up some sort of grooves in it. Definitely way grippier than the stuff we had in before. Same stuff that we put in our free cell barn. We put a couple lines of rubber behind the headlocks over the slats. Okay, a little bit, a little bit more. Oh, don't need to be perfect, I guess. We're gonna move it after. Stuff's so heavy, we thought if we get it started right, we're not gonna roll it right against the wall. Pushing it into place, the only problem is it's just that way, about four inches farther than it needs to be. Getting somewhere with the basement. Apparently his breaker broke. They're bringing another one. He's got some more rocks to break up on that side over there. But looks like this corner is good. We went with a nine foot basement, so that means he had to dig a foot deeper. I guess we could have saved ourselves a little bit going with an eight foot basement. Got it to bunch up here. Now we're gonna try and pull the rest of this down. I'm glad we didn't get the whole thing in one roll. This stuff's heavy. Yeah, we just pulled it half an inch too far, I guess. Let's pull it the other way a little bit. All right, really slow. Hop. That chain works good to slide it. The only problem is it's really hard to slide it half an inch at a time kind of holds it back and then all of a sudden it slides an inch. We were past about half an inch, now we're half an inch short. We're gonna get the other rubber and roll it out and see how it fits. Oh, that's good. Got these stainless steel concrete screws. We're gonna put them pretty close along the ends and then just space them out three feet apart across the sides. They say we don't really need to pass in the center. This rubber is really heavy. Works pretty well. We can sink the heads of those screws down into the rubber. We got the bigger piece all fastened down. And the seam we got done. Wanted to get this nice and tight so it doesn't catch when we go over with a skid loader. Just took a knife and cut a little angle here just so it's harder to catch it with the bucket. Had a few more screws to put in, the drill bit broke. Dad's gonna get one of those. I'm gonna cut the end off a while. Should have ordered just a little bit less rubber. We wanted to try to get it tight, but we still had a Almost an inch extra here. I think I should be able to cut it with angle grinder. It's got metal in it. And it's a really hard rubber. The rubber doesn't cut the best with that grinder, but I don't know what else to do. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not sure that's the best tool. Let me go get a Zolzol, see if that does a better job for us. I need a sharper Zolzol blade. My dad's getting one at the store. Let's see how this basement's coming. Well, this rubber is harder to cut than you'd think. We uh, went through all our batteries trying to cut it, so we're just gonna try and chisel the rest of this concrete out of the way. The grinder cuts the steel, the Zolzo cuts the rubber, but neither of them do very well by themselves. Kind of funny. Push this side down, there's a lump in here or something. The world. What is that? We got this finished up. This is something we needed to do for a long time. It's good to finally get some better rubber in here. Substantially grip here. It's not wet right now, but it's, it's no question that it's gonna be less slippery. Just gotta clean our tools up and we're done. Looks like he's getting somewhere. It's a little frustrating. We had this hiccup here with these rocks. Took an extra day or so to get them sorted out. I think he has most of them out now. 